So yeah, Patrick and I, we were both invited out to Dubai this year for Golf Photo Plus. And just in the couple of days that I've been out here, at least, this has been one of the most memorable experiences of my entire life. And today, actually, we get to sit down and interview a few of the instructors and we can ask them whatever we want. And I'm so curious to ask them about success in general. What did it take for them to become successful photographers? But not just that, really just success in any field. What does it take to make it? And so I'm really curious to see what they each have to say. When I was starting out, I guess my definition of success was to get hired to make pictures. That was, that was it. I think when I got into this industry, I probably had two objectives, and that was to do good and interesting work and uh, maintain um, the respect of my colleagues. Well, I mean, my personal definition of success hasn't really changed over the years. It's, it's, it's essentially making a plan and pulling it off. I personally think the overriding characteristic that leads to success in so many people is, is just the assumption that something can just be done. I think the thing that a lot of people do and that I did is you doubt yourself. And I, don't, I think if I had gone back and spoken to myself, I, I would have tried to convince myself not to doubt it anymore because it probably would have happened faster if I had believed it the entire time. A lot of people, I believe, do know in some capacity what they want to do. I think a lot of times what holds us back is fear. We, I mean, for myself, all the time, I can find a million excuses not to do something. It's more comfortable to not try that. It's, you know, it might lead to failure. That's not a fun thing to, to deal with, so it'd be easier to not go there. But I think a lot of times, more than not, if we're honest with ourselves, we do know, we do have this, like, kind of deep down burning idea or desire of something that we want to go after or achieve and I think the biggest thing really is to just move past that fear and put yourself out there. I think I, I probably know more about failure than I do about success uh, because I've been really stellar in the failure part <laughs> and uh, the successes that I've had in, in you know my work have, have all been born out of just falling on my face and losing it all. I, as I always tell people, I've been up, down, and sideways in this business. I've, I've been broker than a church mouse. I've gone through stretches where I had no work. Uh, I was looking at a mountain of debt. Yeah, I look back at the failures uh, that I've had in my life, and my career, and it's, I can usually put the finger back right to me of, uh, you know, uh, not applying myself the way I should have or letting my priorities get messed up. Um, thinking that, you know, at one point in my life I thought the gear and the equipment was the important part and so I was going heavily into debt. In 2002, I shot a client and she said, you know, you're really good. I said, I feel like I'm really good. And she's like, we got great stuff. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be the best headshot photographer in New York. <laughs> she laughed, I see her face right now. It was like she just freaking hit me with a stake in my heart. But that's what drove me. I think there are a few things that are kind of the pitfalls uh, that people make. Probably the most significant one is that people don't work hard enough, honestly. Like it takes a certain level of commitment to make it in any field. And I think photography is certainly no exception and it can be very competitive. But you really have to like it I, I liked it more than anything else. Like to me, it was more fun to take a picture than to go bowling or golfing or play tennis or go to the movies. If I had a choice, I'd rather take a picture because when you take a picture, you're creating something. You're like giving birth to this little new thing that didn't exist before. And I think if you don't like it that much, then it won't pay off for you. It's sort of like what's good about photography is whatever you put into it, you get back. At least that's been my experience. And when I've been less committed to it, I've gotten less back from it. The one thing I will say, almost everybody who's successful works hard at it. It isn't just grab the camera and go shoot for an hour and then go down to the swimming pool and eat bonbons and, and you know look at movies on your iPad. Those people will never be a big success. Be nice to people. Like don't alienate your clients, don't alienate models, don't alienate assistants. Like, be nice to people. People will help you throughout your career. One thing I wish I'd done more that I haven't and still don't do is I, like it's called networking. 
But I wish I had just kind of communicated more with people in the business. It could be art directors, it could be curators, it could be other photographers. And I've always communicated with other photographers and assistants because I feel like we're on the same wavelength. But I've never felt comfortable networking. If someone gave me advice, it would be like, look, just get over that and just, just interact with people. You never know who's going to talk to whom. And ultimately, that's what makes the world go round. Like if I have, someone calls me, or if I, need, if I need to find an assistant or a makeup artist, I could look at a thousand portfolios, or I could call up somebody I know and say, hey, you know, I'm really stuck. I need a makeup artist for tomorrow. Who should I call? And they'll say, actually, I just met this woman yesterday. She's awesome. That's how stuff goes down. That's how work gets passed along. On the responsible side of things, I say, slash your expenses. Get rid of any car payments. Like, get as rid of as much debt that you have, because that debt will always be, you know, being held over your head. Live in a crappy apartment. Drive a horrible beater car. Like, get rid of cable television. Don't go to Starbucks every day. Like, cut your expenses to the bone, because you can either have this half way comfortable suburban lifestyle or you can have the career that you want. I do tell photographers, I'm like, look, when I did it, I didn't just jump ship on my other jobs, you know. You have to get into it, get some income, start making money, and then when the money flip-flops, you can jump, but don't jump before that. The beauty of it is that you do struggle for, you know, a number of years, but if you work hard and you're tenacious and you market yourself and you network and you get out there and you keep doing it and keep doing it, like the potential for growth is amazing. Successful people to me, um, they make decisions very quickly and rarely change them at all. I think people that are wishy-washy, um, they change their mind all the time and change things and don't really go and they're t talking about things like, like wishing it would happen. And I think successful people just, just go for it. So when I was younger, I think my biggest impediment to success was assuming that I'm gonna have to get to be a certain age before I can be successful. Like when I was 18 years old, it's like, man, when I'm 25, I'm gonna be killing it. And when I'm 25, it's like, man, when I'm 30, people take me seriously. And when I'm 30 years old, it's like, man, when I'm 40 years old, I'm gonna have that little bit of gray in the size of my hair and I won't be considered a kid anymore. There is no minimum age for success. You just have to do it. And, and what I would say is, People who are really good at what they do and successful and motivated and such, when they were 15, they were probably already motivated or made themselves motivated. You know, Mozart wrote symphonies at, at age seven, so you really, you really gotta be 40 years old before you can take a good picture? Just, just do it, let's see what happens. I think a really important thing that I've done all the way along is I take my biggest risks on the biggest shoots. I, like, I really go all out on the important shoots. I don't sort of play it safe for the shoots and then do testing and experimenting in my own time. I kind of go out on a limb on the big shoots because I feel like the pressure's on. It has to work. And so you make it happen. I'm really proactive about clients. I actually go out and research and find clients that I want to be working with. I don't wait for them to find me. That happens sometimes, absolutely, but I actually spend time every month looking at interior design blogs, I'm surfing the internet, right, looking for clients that are doing really cool work. When I see somebody doing something really great, I really look into it and I'll pick up the phone and I'll call them up and say, hey, I saw that project you did in Philadelphia, whatever it is, that was so cool the way you did this and you clad the building in stainless steel and etc. I'm a photographer, I'd really love to be shooting your stuff. But I work until sometimes two in the morning. You know, I'm working all day and then I'm working at night. And there's, there are thousands of people doing that who are, if you don't do it, they're gonna just pass you by because they're doing it. And so that's really what it takes, especially when you're young and starting out. Uh, it takes that kind of effort to make something happen because no one's gonna just hand you some opportunity or something for no reason. You've gotta show that you deserve it. You know, you gotta have a portfolio. So if you wanna be shooting, whatever it is you wanna be shooting, it's gotta be in your book now. You know, if you wanna be shooting it next year, it needs to be in your portfolio right now to make that happen. And so it's a chicken and egg kind of thing. I have no problem with doing a free shoot if it's gonna benefit me, right? I mean, I, it's, not, it's, not, it's not for free. I'm getting paid with experience, 
and a great portfolio, which I will go out and turn into a lot of money over the long term. I think the difference between my work and every other headshot photographer in the world is this. I think I'm that much better. I don't think I'm like amazingly better. I think I'm that much better. And I think the commercial portrait photographers that are doing the best work today are like, maybe they're like this much better than the, than the guys that are trying to make it. Maybe they're this much better. So I know it can be learned. I'm self-taught. Anybody can do it. I personally have found it not fruitful to try and chase the money. I feel like when I've been happiest taking pictures, the money followed. And I feel like if people are doing pictures that they're truly happy with, then that will, then, you know, financial success will hopefully follow. They're looking at guys like Joe McNally or they're looking at, uh, at uh, Annie Leibovitz and trying to emulate some sort of fantasy that they have of these people. Um, the key is to relax, you know, just relax. You're doing it right, make the photos that you want to make, do things the way you want to do them, and, and the hell with everybody else. I think the most important thing is to try and find some very personal uh, style or look or way that you see the world and the way you interpret it, the world. Uh, you know, the people whose pictures you can see published are on a screen and you look at that picture and you say, that's when it, his or her pictures. Those are the people who are going to succeed because they figured out a way to mix both the vast capabilities of the modern media and a very personal way of making their work stand out and be seen. And I think there's two kinds of thinking. There's, I'm one of many photographers, I hope I get picked, I hope I get a job, and then the way that I like to think is I want to create something so unique that I'm the only person that can create it. Don't think about the process, don't think about what the world can give you, like how can I make money taking pictures, is totally the wrong way to do it. Um, I think what you think about first is, well, and I love to take pictures, what kinds of pictures, what kind of change do I want to make happen? Whether that is bringing attention to something that's important or, or helping part of the community or really getting into the type of tech and, and studying you know, some kind of business you're into through photography. If you think about what can my pictures achieve, what do you want to achieve with them? And then you think, okay, what kinds of pictures am I going to need to take to make that happen? That's a really powerful combination. And when you look at hyper successful photographers that have become really good, really fast, really young, that's exactly what they've done. Um, Joey Lawrence, that's exactly what he did. Dave Hill, that's exactly what he did. Uh, Tim Tatter, that's exactly what he did. So I think having a, a kind of a bigger compass point and then working backwards from that is the shortcut to success as a photographer. Does that work for an accountant? I don't know. I'm not an accountant, but I know it works for photography. Um. It's not even a strength or particularly admirable, you know. I, uh, I really don't know how to do anything else, you know. I had no choice but to stick it out because I, I wouldn't be happy doing something else or trying something else. I, I couldn't imagine just going off in a different direction and trying something that I ultimately knew I wouldn't be any good at. Um, this is the, uh, the thing that I chose or chose me. And for better or for worse, I've just stuck it out. It's not easy. It is a jump. It's like a leap of faith in some ways. But um, I think, again, it's more important to be doing what you love than to be worrying about money and you know, what other people define success as. It really needs to be what you define it as. You know, now, now I, I get to travel and I get to see other parts of the world and I get to take my family with me. And, and I get to spend more time with my family and I get to be somewhat in control of my own schedule. Uh, I'm in control of my own income. Um, whereas when I'm working a retail job, I'm not in control of that. Where I am right now in my life, I'm extremely happy and fortunate. And so I figure every step I took, whether it was a good step or a misstep, has led me to this place. So the ups and downs are, are just always there and there's things that you might just cringe about now when you think about it, but I can't think of anything absolutely specific other than, um, you know, it's like, it's like a storm. You just have to keep weathering it and eventually you'll get a break in the clouds.